Hello ladies, um, welcome to our Faith Mission Ladies Retreat 2020. We would have been meeting um, at the Camp Centre in Campbellville this weekend and next weekend for our Spring Ladies Retreats. Unfortunately, we're not able to do that this year and so we are doing it online instead. Not the way that I would have wanted to do it. Um, but thankful that we have this technology. I don't be, I don't like being in front of the camera. Um, I would much prefer just standing up in front of you at um, Campbellville um, Camp Centre, but that's not to be. Um, I miss all you ladies and maybe some of you ladies were going to join us for the first and maybe some of you ladies wouldn't have even been at Ladies Retreat and you get to be blessed by this um, time today as we meet together, as we sing together, as we pray together, as we hear God's word. Um, I'm just thankful that um, we're still able to do this, that we have technology that enables us to still um, maybe not see each other, um, but still come together um, to worship God. God is so good and um, God has been so faithful to us here as a family. Um, as you know, um, Timothy and I live here with our four kids and it has been fun. We've had the two older kids home um, from school and we've been trying to homeschool in some way. Um, connecting with their wonderful teachers um, and our kids have been so good and um, it's been a real bonding time and a time where we've got to teach our kids in maybe the way that we would want to teach them weller than in the way that um, the public school would want to teach them. Um, when I asked Grace one day what was her favourite thing about being homeschooled and she said was that we got to learn God's word because they didn't do that in school and I'm just so thankful that our kids have got to learn many wonderful beautiful memory verses over the la these last couple of weeks. They've got to learn verses like trusting in the Lord with all your heart and leaning not in your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledging him and he will direct your paths and I'm we're believing that as a family we're believing that as a mission we're believing believing that as an individual that God will direct us trusting in him and and not in our own understanding not understanding what is going on around us not understanding what this whole why we are in this whole um, quarantine or whatever you call it, um, not being able to be with our friends and family, but trusting God and that he will use it and use it in our lives, use it in our neighbours' lives, use it in um, those around us as they see the way that we live. Ladies, I'm thankful that Deborah has been able to put together two songs for us today um, that we can sing together, we can um, praise him. Um, I, I love singing, I love getting together and hearing all of our beautiful voices coming together. And I'll miss that part, but I know ladies that you'll be singing your little hearts out there in your houses, wherever, wherever you are today. Um, also, Janet and Laura Ann have put together a little something and Janet's going to share in this first session. She's just going to share a verse that God has laid in her heart and where she is at at this at this time. And we're thankful for Jessica McLean. Jessica would have been our speaker this year at the Industry Treat. And unfortunately, she's not able to, to do that, but she's still agreed to put two messages together for us to listen to today. And I know that God um, has laid those upon her heart. And I pray that we will, as we listen today, we will listen with open hearts, listen to what God has to say to us. Jessica is from Orangeville. She lives there with her husband and her five kids. And they um, used to be in Quebec, Cape Marie, Quebec. And so we just, we pray for them as a family. We pray that God will continue to use them. And just today, ladies, as we um, we come, um, remember that it's, this is, God has something to say to us today. Whether we're sitting here in the house um, or you're sitting outside or you're listening to this as you're walking, um, 
God has something to say to us today. And I know I need to hear it. And I just pray that you would be in that place where you would really hear and take in what God would say. So let's just pray before we hand it over to the rest of the ladies. Father, we thank you, God, that you are here with us today. Thank you, God, that you love us and you care for us. We thank you, God, that we're reminded, Lord, daily, Lord, of your goodness, Lord. Reminded of your goodness and how, Lord, you have not left us, you have not forsaken us, God. We thank you, God, that in these days, Lord, you've been teaching us new things. You have been teaching us, Lord, more about yourself, God. We pray, Lord, that we will be coming closer, Lord, to you, God. Pray today, Lord, as Jessica would share, share your word, God, that you would open our hearts to hear it and to receive it. God, we pray, Lord, that you would use it in our lives, God. We know, Lord, we're not always in the right place. We know, Lord, we're not always living in a way, Lord, that honours you. And we pray today, God, that you would challenge us, you would encourage us, Lord, that you would just show us, Lord, what it is you would have us do and how you would have us live. So, God, may you have your way in us today. May you have your way, Lord, in this time, God, as Jessica shares your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Hi ladies, I'm recording this message from the center which is awfully quiet these last nine weeks with nobody around except Myron and I to think it would have been bustling and full of you coming in for the weekend excited to be with each other and also to hear God's word and instead we're at home uh, we're having to do this a little bit differently, but I hope you're going to take time over the weekend or maybe in the days that follow to listen to the messages that are posted and let them encourage your hearts. We were featured this week on the Faith Mission Facebook website, so our prayer requests are on there. So I'm not going to mention those again because you can go and look at them. But I do want to leave you with just a couple verses from the Bible. It's Hebrews 3, 12 to 14, and it says... See to it, sisters, not brothers, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share in Christ if we hold firmly till the end the confidence that we had at the beginning. I hope that, that will encourage your hearts. Enjoy this time uh, virtually that we're together and know that we are praying for you and I hope that you are praying for us as well. God bless you. Bye. Ladies, uh, the retreat this year looks a little different, um, but I what has been on my heart is when I think about us getting together is just how it doesn't matter where we come from, what our backgrounds are, what our family situations are like, but the, the what brings us together is who Christ is and what he has done for us. And so I thought it would be appropriate, even though we're scattered around uh, the province, um, and I'm actually here in Quebec, but that we would just sing how deep the Father's love for us. This is what it's all about. This is who it's all about. And so if you would just join me in singing.
Hi, Jessica McLean here, coming to you from Teen Ranch in Caledon, Ontario. Not too far from where we were going to be meeting these couple weekends in May. You guys are scattered all across the country, so greetings to you. I hope you have blue skies and sunshine, but if you're anything like me and have a rainy spring day, you get to enjoy the fire. I'm glad that we get to meet together still. I must confess that I do not enjoy seeing my reflection as I am sharing, but it's been a great reminder too that that's the whole reason we come to God through his word is that he can transform our minds and our hearts and our wills to reflect him and his thoughts and his heart and his purposes. And so I am glad that we had that opportunity today. We're going to be looking at the book of Ephesians and Ephesians is one of my favorite books of the Bible. I can prove it because it's not even in my Bible anymore. Um, but I love Ephesians because it was written not to correct specific things that were wrong, but actually to help enlarge the view that God's people had of who God was, how much he cared for them, how much he had already blessed them with, and how much was still to come. It's an incredible book, and I hope that as we're looking at it during this time of the pandemic where many of us have been pushed outside of our security zones, our comfort zones, um, where there's so many different views on where we're at in history with this and in God's plan. I hope that these words from Ephesians can help take us above our circumstances and really help us to see from God's perspective, to be reminded that he is accomplishing his purposes regardless of how crazy circumstances can look. And that amidst that, his greatest commitment is to his people, his church, and accomplishing what he wants to in them and through them as he is summing up all things under Christ. So we're going to have a good little look at Ephesians. I hope that you guys can follow along, grab your Bible or your phones or wherever you have God's word. We're going to start in chapter one and I really want to read it to you. It is rich and deep and full, but I want you to hear it in a fresh and new way. So if if you can hear more clearly from reading along, please do that. And if you can hear more clearly through closing your eyes and just listening and letting his word penetrate that way, please do that. We're going to be starting in chapter one and it starts off by saying Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus. Paul wrote this book. He, he wrote it around AD 30, around the time of Colossians and he wrote it as a transformed man. He was one that despised Christ Jesus, anything connected to him. He approved the, uh, the killing of the saints, not only approved, that's what he wanted and he worked for. And then Christ Jesus met him personally. We see this in Acts and his entire life was transformed and his purposes and his plans, what he lived for and what he strived for. And he strived to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. And that same heart is reflected in the pages of the scripture. We come to Ephesians to be transformed. And that is God's work and his purpose. So Paul, who wrote this, will be sharing with us. And here we go. So feel free to close your eyes or read along in your Bible. Ephesians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints who are at Ephesus and who are faithful in Christ Jesus, may you be found faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him, that we would be set apart and without spot or stain. Isn't that incredible? In love, he predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intention of his will. Keep listening, guys, for how God's heart is reflected in here his heart to his people. 
In love, he predestined us to adoption as sons and daughters through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intention of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace. God is not stingy. He lavished forgiveness on us according to his riches. In all wisdom and insight, he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his kind intention, which he purposed in him, in Christ, with a view to an administration suitable to the fullness of the times, that is, the summing up of all things in Christ, things in heaven and things on the earth. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to his purpose, who works all things after the counsel of his will. This God who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, he's chosen us in Christ. He's setting us apart, making us blameless. He's doing this through Jesus and because of his kind intention. He's bestowing on us grace in the beloved, redemption, forgiveness, far beyond what we are deserving of. And he's making known to us the mystery of his will, his plans and his purposes, which he set about before all things and is bringing about by summing up all things under Christ, things in heaven and on earth, meaning all things are being brought under the headship of Christ. We have obtained an inheritance as well, having been predestined to this inheritance after his counsel and his purposes to the end that they who were the first to hope in Christ would be to the praise of his glory and that in him, in Christ Jesus, you, you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. This Holy Spirit of promise who is given as a pledge of our inheritance with a view to the redemption of God's own possession to the praise of his glory. How do we even begin to unpackage that? Isn't it incredible? We have been given all of these things in Christ because of his love and kindness toward us. And we've been given this as individuals, but brought together as a whole because his plan and purpose is to redeem his church, his people. And as we are his inheritance, he is ours. It's beautiful. You know, it. I think one of the things that stands out to me the most in this is that all of this is only made possible through Christ, through Christ Jesus. And that leads me to John 14. John 14 is a beautiful part of scripture where it explains how the Father is found in the Son and the Son is found in the Father. And that picture I want to share with you today because I think we cannot grasp all that we have if we don't understand that all that we have is only made possible through Christ. And that is why we have to abide and rest in him because in him is found everything that we need and we're provided for richly beyond measure. You guys can turn to John 14 if you want or you can just listen. We'll put some links below where you can just kind of check uh, the verses that we go through. But John 14, it's talking about oneness with the Father. I love it because Thomas was asking Jesus questions, and we all know Thomas had lots of questions and doubts. And then Philip goes on to say, Lord, show us the Father, and it's enough for us. And Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, and yet you have not come to know me, Philip? I love that um, the way it's even stated, how have I been with you so long and yet you still don't know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? Look at that. Do you not believe that I, Jesus, am in the Father and the Father is in me? So this We'll use this, the Father. This is, this is the security <laughs> of heaven, 
of God and all the rich blessings. This is the Father. And Christ Jesus was in the Father, and the Father was in Jesus. Isn't that incredible? And then we go on to see that this Holy Spirit is promised to us so that when we come to faith, when we hear the word of truth, the gospel of our salvation, and we believe, we are brought into this union with Christ, with the Father. We have the Holy Spirit, a promise that is tucked into our very being, this shallow, hollow, empty part of us that only God can fill because that's that was made for him to be within his people. When that Holy Spirit is put back into us, the very Spirit of God is put in his people, and then we are found in Christ, and Christ is found in God. And then this is where everything happens. This is the promise of Ephesians 1, that we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Everything that God has done on our behalf has been through Christ, from the kind intention of God's heart. And we have been brought into that, to the praise of his glory. And for this reason, Paul says, I too, having heard of the faith in the Lord Jesus, which exists among you, and your love for all the saints, do not cease giving thanks for you while making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. We need that. We need the spirit of wisdom and revelation because this isn't head knowledge. The work that God does in our hearts, we can hear about, but we must personally come to apply those. And that is where I think when Paul is talking about to know the love of Christ and the depth that he wants to know and understand, we have to put that into action. He says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the surpassing greatness of the power toward us who believe? These are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. Do you guys hear that? The very same power that was at work Raising Christ from the grave and seating him in heaven is the very same power that is made available to us who believe. The surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe in accordance with the strength of his might. This is what God offers us. I think at a time when so many of us are feeling very weak and helpless, confused and struggling, to be reminded that the very same power that rose Jesus from the grave is the very same power available to us on a moment by moment basis. And it is only found in him. He put all things in subjection under Christ's feet and gave him as head over all things to the church. This is another point I just wanna share with you, the church. When God put all things in subjection under Christ's feet, it says he gave him as head over all things to the church. And I love that it says gave. It doesn't say assigned or put or whatever other words you want to put there. It says he gave Christ as head over all things to the church. And it just goes along with what we're reading of God's love and kindness toward his people. In his care for his people and for his church, he gave us Jesus Christ as the head. And that head who's given as a gift to the church is given to us with the purpose of leading us, guiding us, directing us, having the vision, the plan, knowing where we're going. And then the church, which is his body, becomes the outworking of the very heart of God. I get so excited for that, and I hope you do too. I know many of you are in ministry of come alongside uh, churches, individuals. This is what we want, is to be working out God's heart toward people, isn't it? And when the church was given Christ as the head, the church became the body. And the body is to be 
reaching out and doing that which the head wants to have happen. Isn't that a beautiful picture that the very body of Christ, the church together, not just one individual, but us as a whole, is actually outworking what the very heart and mind of God has determined. This I love, and it says this, the church which is his body is the fullness of him who fills all in all. I know at a time like this, we don't necessarily feel like we are the fullness of Christ in action. But there's this image that I love when I think of it. So God has been set above, God is above all, and Christ has been set at his right hand, and all things are subject under him. And the church was gifted this head that would direct and guide. And we have the privilege of being his hands and his feet to the world around us, to one another and to unbelievers, to share the truth, to reach out in love. And this is not a stingy thing God has done. You know, as we read in chapter one, he lavishes upon us. He bestows upon us freely and abundantly. There's nothing stingy about God. And then when it comes to his church, he wants to fill all in all. And when I think of this, this image comes to mind of a balloon. I'm not going to blow it for you. I planned ahead. But, you know, this is like the body of Christ, right? And he breathes life into his church into a way that is meant to be full, where there is no part that's sagging and weak. His church is the fullness, is full of his fullness to the point that there is nowhere else to fill. He's filled all in all. And this is us, his body, meant to be a light in our homes, our families, our churches, our ministries, you name it. But do we understand that? And that's one of the things I just, I'm going to leave with you in this session, these couple things to think on. And then the next ses session, we'll look at something else. But I want to leave you guys with this thought. The very God who has called you unto himself, who has forgiven you, who has lavished every spiritual blessing upon you, he has given you a place with him. You are found in Christ and Christ in God. And there's no greater security than that. There's no greater security than being found in Christ. And at this time where we are having many things stripped from us, our security, stability, comfort, this reminder is so needed. We are in Christ. And as God is working out his plan, even this pandemic, can be used by him for the building up of his body in love. It can be used by him as he's summing up all things in Christ. We're okay. His church is okay. His body is okay. And buildings can close and ministries can close and ways of ministry can change and be pushed. It can all happen and it's okay because we are all found in Christ and he's got the plan. Brings me great comfort. And to know that as he has that plan and as we are found in him, his purpose for his church and his body is that the very fullness of God would dwell in us and in his body as a whole. And I would encourage you guys to take some time to just reflect on these things and reflect on what purpose God has for you within his body. We're going to get into a little bit more as we go, but let these truths just settle into your heart. Take a moment to refresh your drinks and come back and we'll join in together again. Also for this session, there is a link on the bottom for a song that I would encourage you to listen to in closing, uh, Jeremy Camp, The Same Power. And the whole point and message of the song is that the very same power that rose Jesus from the grave is in us and we live out of that. Thanks guys. <music>